Hey, painful mess here. I'm trying this phone thing again. Didn't work out too poorly last time. Um, so I finished second Nephi. It took me quite a bit longer than I had hoped. Uh, this was a much harder book to read than first Nephi. And it was a little longer as well. So since it's been a while, I'll just quickly remind you what happened in the last book. There's this man named Lehi, and he has four children. Later he has more, but um, two of them are Nephi and Laman. Uh, Le Lehi has a vision right at the beginning, and they leave Jerusalem. And then eventually a bunch of people join him and his family. Um, then Nephi builds a boat, and they travel across a huge body of water uh, until they reach the land of Bountiful, which is America. So that's basically where we left off. That's a very brief summary of 1st Nephi. Um, 2nd Nephi starts with another prophecy of Lehi. Um, and actually most of 2nd Nephi is prophecy. This is what takes so long. There's very little action that happens in this. Um, so it talks about rede the redemption from the coming Messiah. It talks about the importance of the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. Um, in fact, my favorite passage in the entire Book of Mormon, probably, or one of, one of my favorite passages, actually, that's not true. I do have a, I have a much better one later on, um, is in the second chapter here. So, uh, let me just briefly read this to you. And now, behold, if Adam had not transgressed, he would not have fallen, but he would have remained in the Garden of Eden, and all things which were created must have remained in the same state in which they were after they were created, and they must have remained forever and had no end. And they would have had, have had no children, wherefore they would have remained in a state of innocence, having no joy. For they knew no misery, doing no good, for they knew no sin. Adam fell that men might be, and men are that they might have joy. So basically, it's this incredibly positive spin on this, you know, pretty dismal story of the fall of man, saying, if man didn't fall, then don't think of the bad side of this. Think of this as, without the fall of man, we could not experience joy. Um, so that's, that was something I found interesting. I didn't really notice that the first time I read um, the Book of Mormon. Um, so then there's Prophecy of Joseph Smith and the Coming Book of Mormon. Uh, then Lehi dies, Lehi the father. Um, probably the most important event of this book, 2 Nephi, happens. Um, ne Nephi and Laman fight over Nephi's appointment to carry on his father's work. So um, then we get these two separate groups, ne Nehi... Sorry, Nephi takes a group and he travels away, um, and he takes the the compass with him. Um, so this causes there to be two main groups in America now, and obviously uh, this is where the names come from: the Nephites and the Lamanites. So at this point, the Lamanites are not following God's commandments, and they don't believe. So, God curses them, and he makes their skin dark, so that all can know who the Lamanites are. So, this is, uh, this is probably one of the more common passages brought up in anti-Mormon literature. Um, then, next, there's a lot of parallels with Isaiah in the Bible. So, I won't go into depth here, but... There's talk of atonement and redemption, the crucifixion, judgment, hell, penalties for sins, etc. These types of things. Um, in particular, chapters 12 through 24 of 2 Nephi exactly parallel chapters, or yeah, chapters 2 through 14 of Isaiah. Um, and then we sort of return back to the Nephites. Uh, so they, they're keeping the law, and they're worshiping God dutifully. Um, then Nephi predicts the destruction of his people, and that false churches will be built up. So this is basically in reference to the proliferation of Protestant and Catholic denominations of Christianity in America. Then he prophecies that the Book of Mormon will come forth, and there will be three witnesses to this. Uh, doesn't say this, but... 
Um, for the record, these are Oliver Cowdery, uh, David Whitmer, and Martin Harris. These are the three witnesses to the Book of Mormon. Um, many people, and then he, and then Nephi prophecies, and many people re will reject the Book of Mormon, which, I don't know, that's, that's probably, <laughs> I could have predicted that. Um, Nephi talks about the importance of baptism. Uh, then one of the more common recurring themes of the Book of Mormon is told for the first time. By praying and pondering in your heart with an openness to God, you can come to have knowledge. So, um, this is basically the idea of revelation. Uh, Nephi's words are a testament to Christ, and you can tell whether or not they are true by asking in your heart whether or not they are true. Uh, this will come up again in the last book, Moroni, and probably in other places as well. I remember this coming up several times last time I read it. Um, so that's Second Nephi. Uh, the next several books shouldn't take me as long. They're much shorter, and um, the next one will be the first time we are reading something by someone other than Nephi. So I hope you find this interesting, because we have a lot to go.